Okay, I have a question just for District 4 candidates. What is your position regarding commercial development on Williamson Valley Road? Yes, no, maybe, possibly. <clears throat> right now, no. In the future, things will have to change eventually. I mean, we see the Deepwell Ranch, possible houses going in there, we don't know. But for right now, I am against it. I would like to see a turn lane down at Outer Loop. Other than that, right now I'm against it. Am I for commercialization of Williamson Valley Road? Everybody remember the four and five lane? Uh, going to be a commercial corridor. Remember that story? That's one of the reasons why I ran for this office. It's not going to happen in my time. However, if an appropriate type of business, like say a stable, feed and grain, something like that, would want to go in maybe at Outer Loop in Williamson Valley, I'm not opposed to that. However, it would be up to the residents of the immediate area to decide if they wanted that amount of kind of traffic coming into that immediate area. <clears throat> Many of you know that we have an ordinance in Yavapai County in regard to homegrown businesses. I'm not opposed to homegrown businesses, even though they're commercial. If they're not affecting their neighbors and their neighbors don't aren't upset about it, and we go through the PNZ Commission, then I'm all for it. Why not? You want to work out of your home off your computer? Fine, as long as it doesn't affect your neighbors, and that's what's very important. And it needs to fit the area. Like I said, stables, board and care for horses, whatever that type of activity would be, that fits the area. We're a rural environment. But having a strip mall? Uh, no. <laughs> I don't think so. Why cannot we institute a jail of Quonset huts for criminals? Our servicemen live in them. If it's good enough for them, it should be, in Sam, it should be okay for criminals. The cost would certainly be less. Any comments? Starting with Craig. Okay. First of all, jails basically have to come under certain standards, and the federal government is the one that makes the standards. Now, does everybody agree with the federal government standards? Yeah. Raise your hand. Uh, yeah, that's what I thought. So that's part of the problem. There are certain standards that have to be met, or the federal government comes in and takes over your jail. And that's what I said before. They start writing your checks. They don't care if you can pay for it or not. They just start writing checks. L.A. County, they were under a decree for at least 10 years, and we did everything we possibly could. And here we're talking five or 600 inmates when I had to deal with 27,000. And that's how many are in the jail system in the L.A. County. Male, female, and everything in between. So. <laughs> no Do they share bathrooms? Chris? Yeah, that that kind of question. We really are constrained by um, by what the government says, and I know some of that stuff sounds cool, but we really do have to be realistic here. So um, I agree with Craig on his answer. If we were able to, I would. <laughs> yes, you bet. But unfortunately, there are a lot of restrictions. You know, you never know. Maybe in the future. Well, and and I did a what, and I'm not going to uh, replow that field. I did a what Craig said uh, with with uh, one little additional thing I want to slip in here. Uh, somebody mentioned something about wondering why the Camp Verde jail ever happened. Well, this very topic was one of the reasons, because the federal government was this close to taking over our jail system back then. This close, folks. And they had to move quick. So they, Camp Verde was the quickest way to get something taken care of. Otherwise, we were going to be in dire straits. And, and there's a whole, whole long li a laundry list of reasons why that, that old jail was a problem at that time. And that's why we. They, they went ahead and did the uh, Camper Jail. Question. Much has been said about Prescott City and Yavapai County's PSPRS unfunded debt. Does every city and town, every city, town, and county have PSPRS debt? If not, why? What is the total state's PRS, PS, PRS debt? 
I, I have no idea what the total debt is on the state, and, and I cannot get fine-tuned down to every little community. I mean, uh, Jerome may not have a, a big debt, but obviously they've got about one or two officers. Um, the, uh, the whole PSRS uh, uh, situation, though, you've got 15 counties and, and, and a, a, a widespread of cities in the state, and I'm going to tell you, virtually everyone is being affected by this PSRS. But I have no idea what the total state obligation is. I don't either, but I will say that Mayor Ober and uh, Noel Campbell are working very hard to, uh, they're working very hard on this. So, there we go. Um, we're about $8.4 billion in debt to the state on PSPRS. Um, there's 256 entities in the PSPRS system, 85% of which are less than 100% funded. And this is why I really do believe that we can look at a state solution to this. Of that 85%, 64% of them are less than 50% funded. That means they have less than 50% of every dollar that they need to, to pay for these pensions. This is really an absolutely crisis. And, and like I said, this, this case that's gonna be decided pretty soon, it, it, it's just gonna be devastating for, for all of us. This pension debt is crushing just not our area. It, it's crushing the whole state. So um, this is, I've spent, so, I've probably spent 1,500 hours on this topic. And um, because I, I can't even tell you, I actually sometimes wake up four in the morning, I'm reading pension blogs from across the nation because I'm wondering how other people are solving this crisis. I mean, if you, if you Philadelphia, my hometown, is actually in debt almost for what our entire state is. I mean, th this stuff can't continue and it's just not unique to the city of Prescott. It's everywhere. I mean, we have to find some solutions and Prop 124, it started us in the right, right direction. But the reason foundation, we're gonna take about 30 more years to really maintain equal labor to get this system on the right path. And that's, that's what we have to do, folks. We have to somehow survive the next 30 years before um, we can get this uh, pension fund full, fully funded. I just wanna say, I think Mary Beth said that very well. She actually is very right on as far as the numbers. The numbers are huge. But again, it's not the counties, it was not the cities that bought into this. It was something we did by the power of the people. So we have to look at it and say, how are we going to solve this? I don't know. I don't think anybody has a good idea. I don't even think the city of Prescott has a clue on really what their indebtedness is. I've heard numbers from $70 million up to $120 million. So none of us really know what the true indebtedness is because we still have people in the system that are participating and or retiring. So it's very difficult to do any kind of an actuarial out to tell you what the a hard number is. So in looking at that, and we don't know how the market's gonna fluctuate back and forth, which has an effect on the amount of interest that's paid to the people that are retirees. So you've got a lot of question marks out there that nobody can really answer. The total indebtedness, like I think Mary Beth said, it was over $8 billion. And I believe that's actuarial doubt to some degree. But we're going to have to stay with it. We're going to have to do everything we can to maintain our payments, especially here in the county, so we don't fall behind. And that's what we're doing now, is we're paying as the bill comes in so that we don't have any other interest on top of the bad money. So that's one of the things that we try to do in the county. I would hope the city would come up with a funding source or a means to pay on their debt so that they just doesn't continue to spiral out of control. Thank you. Next question. What revenue source would the county use to help Prescott Airport? Question mark, raise taxes, or what? You gonna start, Craig? Okay, I didn't hear the whole question. It had to do with the airport. Okay. We were gabbing. What, what revenue source would the county use to help the Prescott Airport? Would they raise taxes or is there some other source? Okay, first of all, this, the city airport is in the city. Okay, not that we wouldn't want to participate as a regional airport. 
However, like we, I told uh, Mayor Oberg in a meeting with him about four and a half months ago when he asked us to pay for the new terminal, and we said no, was that when we get air service that actually goes somewhere and is meaningful, <laughs> then come back and talk to us. We're not going to just plop some money down and say okay. I think he was thinking we plopped three million dollars down just like we did on on uh, deep uh, what is it uh, Granite Creek or Willow Creek Willow Creek extension okay we we went in partnership with them with uh, Marlon Kirkendall was the mayor at the time we thought it was a great thing because we knew we we're going to be moving to 89 south uh, towards 89a and so that was a great partnership but the airport what does it offer to us right now two days once in a while when they decide they're going to fly we got nothing put in a service that goes to las vegas another one that's regular that goes to san diego now we'll start talking some turkey because we'll have a lot of people using them because we don't want to drive those distances anymore i mean i, I hate highway we need more runways well yeah, we need more runways and we also need more hangers more hangers more things to accommodate before I build a restaurant and a terminal, I want to know I've got air service. Okay, uh, correct right on this. The Great Lakes contract is uh, actually um, going to expire in April of next year. So the Department of Transportation is going to take our piece this fall, and this is how we can change this. Um, I've talked to a lot of business leaders. They are really know that this is the key to move this whole area forward. This is a way to get some clean jobs in here. This is a way to raise revenue. We're going to pay for our roads. We're going to pay for our pension debt. This is a way to keep our kids in this area. I mean, we're losing them, and it's a shame. I mean, these partners want some leadership from our board of supervisors. These are the we can actually go to these other municipalities. They want to buy in. We have grants available right now. We have the small community air service development grants. It's about worth about seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. And what they do, they do marketing studies, though they will uh, market this whole area and they want to find out where will these people want to go. So we can get a reliable air service in here, go to get them, whether it's Las Vegas, whether it's Salt Lake City, go into Salt Lake City, you now have another um, whole different area of the other lines that you can go to as opposed to um, Sky Harbor. These are the kind of things that we really need to do um, here in order to advance this area. And I think um, the Board of Supervisors can spearhead this kind of thing. Maybe Chino doesn't have the money, but we want to extend this runway. They have land. We need the like kind exchanges with this. The Department of Transportation, what they're looking for is the whole community buy-in for this. And this is what's really lacking, and I, that's what I'm going to work on. It's my top priority when I get in office. Well, as someone that's actually taken the Great Lakes uh, I think you know there I think they're open on Tuesday I think they have a flight going out Tuesday Thursday and maybe Saturday so you have to make sure that you're going to go out and come back at the same time I think this would be a great partnership between the city and the county or I should say the cities and the county as Mary Beth said with Chino I really don't think Chino can afford this I think this would be a great partnership but the funds have to be there and everybody will has to work together Where's Prescott Valley in there? So, I, I, really, I really have a, a deep feel for this because I believe it was in my second term as mayor. We had, uh, we had a goal of approximately 10,000 emplanements. We were up over 8,000 emplanements. Mesa Airlines was doing a wonderful job. They were doing a crack-up job. Mount Barrett Jr. is sitting back here and he can fill you in on more of what I'm going to say. But Northern Arizona, the group of them got together and, and these communities and all decided that it was to their benefit and the, and the state was involved with the uh, Department of Trans ADOT has an aeronautical division and in their infinite wisdom they decided that there should be one airline taking care of all these areas. Well, the sad part is they ended up getting rid of Mesa Airlines, and we got Great Lakes. And Great Lakes is a disaster, an absolute. So we went from about 8,800 emplanements to probably around 5,000 or less in rather short order. And the service just gets worse and worse and worse. 
So, and, and but I'm gonna add one little thing. This, this was brought up by Mary Beth at our deal on Wednesday, and I was approached by somebody in the audience which made me kind of scratch my head. And they said, you know, I'm a little concerned. When the city of Prescott has brownouts with their firehouses and they're short staffed and they're not able to properly take care of the public safety and these issues the way they need to, we need to look at getting that our home cleaned up and straightened up before we start looking to spend used bucks. I'm in favor of expanding the airport, I'm in favor of the new terminal, I'm in favor of all of that. But there's a lot that the city needs to get cleaned up before they're going to be able to tackle a big issue like this. Yeah, I, I am not talking about city money here. I'm talking about grant money. And I'm also talking about, I have met with business partners here. They're willing to come in. I'm talking about private par, uh, public partnership. This is what I'm talking about, being able to build it. They're willing to come in and build the terminal ourselves. The environmental assessment's been done already. We, we can start this within next year. Nobody's looking for the city to foot the bill on this. The brownouts, I hope everyone knows what the brownout is. The fire station is not closed. They respond to all medical calls, which is predominantly what the fire department does. So I, I just hope everybody understands what that means when they say the station is browned out. Are we, are we getting a chance to if you comment? want to counter, you got a couple minutes to do that. Okay, on the, in regards to the airport, let's talk about the airport really seriously. Airport is located in the city. They just annexed all around the airport, right? Almost all of that area to the north of it and onto the west side of it. So the city has a plan, but their plan doesn't include the fiscal responsibility on how are you going to pay for it. So they're coming to us asking the county, which is not part of the city, to be the bank. Do you want to be the bank? I didn't think so. Because what will happen if we have to give them the money that we don't have? Taxes go where? That's right. So, $3 million. We have $13 million in reserve right now in this county. That would last us about a year and a half if stuff hit the fan. Okay? And that's about all it is. You can't hear me, that would be a first. What? <laughs> but we have to look at this and we can say when we can partner with things that make sense, that does the greater good for everyone, terrific. But in this particular case, until they have a good workable plan on how they're going to use the airport, I don't think we want to put in a new restaurant or a terminal. Let's wait and see until we have a plan that really works. Then come back to us and talk to it. Like I told Mayor Obert, what's in it for the county and the people, the taxpayers of the county? I just got a blank look. There was the city of Prescott Valley mentioned. He mentioned it earlier. Why don't we ask them personally? Oh, let me respond to that. <laughs> the answer to Prescott Valley is they're not willing to participate. Period. Period. <laughs> we are pretty much on schedule here. We've run out of questions. I guess everybody in the audience knows everything they want to know. We are about out of time. I'm going to ask the candidates to close in one minute. And I'll start with um, Thank you. the ladies you first. How about Marla? <laughs> Well, if you had to vote on me because of my speaking, I would lose. <laughs> I am not a polished speaker. I am not a politician. But I will be a fabulous District 4 supervisor for you. I will look after everything. I will look out after the best. I can't even say it. I will look out for your best interests and I will work hard for you. So with that I'm just going to give it off to Mary Beth. Okay, let's go to the other district four candidate. Oh, 
I heard the number four. <laughs> By the way, I forgot to introduce somebody, Betty Bargold. And where did uh, Phil go? Phil, He's here. You guys, would you guys stand up for a minute? Take my time and give it to these folks. They did a heck of a job doing it on the Veterans Memorial. Yes, they did. Down at the square. They did the the amount of hours they put in as volunteers researching the information for that dedication was amazing. Just amazing. Betty, thank you so much well, for everything thank you, you did. Thank you so much. So, that's my minute. <laughs> Folks, we keep electing the same people over and over again. Nothing ever changes here. There's no vision for the future, and things never advance. I told you that statistic, we're losing 29% of those jobs. That's just in the last six, seven, eight years. We've got to change the direction of which this county's going. Not be criticized because uh, I don't smile enough, I don't crack enough jokes. If you're looking for somebody to do that, that ain't me. I'm the one working for you. So if you support me, take my art sign, call me up, sure. see how you can help me out in your candidate. I appreciate your vote, I appreciate anything you do for me. Thank you for your time, thank you all for coming out, I appreciate it. A little correction to that last statement, uh, uh, I might remind you that many times people are reelected because the voters think they're doing a damn good job. I've got 40 years, I'm going to really cram this in here, but I've been a 40 year resident here. You guys all know me. Uh, I'm an open book. Uh, three terms as mayor. Uh, don't discount the 22 years on the hospital district board. And also, of course, uh, uh, one completed term here. Uh, I have been deeply involved in the community, a lot of nonprofits, uh, just about everything imaginable you can do. And so I'm going to leave with this little statement. When you get that ballot in the mail, you sincerely look at it. And I want you to look at the two people on there running for District 1. And I want you to consciously dig in your heart, forget any of the pomp and circumstance that you've heard during the campaign, and sit back and say, who is it that's best qualified for this position? And I would suggest, in the end, you're going to spell out R-O-W-L-E-S-I-N-N-O-N. Thank you very much. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We hope you enjoyed it. And Jade, it's your life.